I'm Roger Wilkie. Uh, I'm concert master, first chair violinist with uh, the Long Beach Symphony. Um, I play a number of different venues, chamber music, uh, solo, uh, some commercial motion picture soundtracks, and uh, that's it. So tell me a little bit about the event you're doing at the Carpenter Center. Um, it's a full recital program. Uh, it's just myself and a pianist. Uh, the pianist is Joanne Pierce Martin. She's with the Los Angeles Philharmonic. And it's a program of romantic music, um, specifically requested, actually, a program of romantic pieces. Um, and I'm very excited about it. How did it come about? Um, well, there was a gentleman who has attended Long Beach Symphony concerts, and I, he is on the board of uh, the Carpenter Center, and he, he requested that I would perform. Uh, so there, there we are. Here we are. So do you want to talk a little bit about the program? Sure. Uh, the first half, uh, the first piece, actually it's four pieces by a composer, Czech composer, Joseph Suk, who I believe studied with uh, Dvorak. And they're all, it's not so well known, but should be a very romantic piece, almost a little impressionistic sounding, uh, beautiful melodies, beautiful harmonies. Uh, the next piece is the Franck Sonata, which is probably one of the greatest sonatas written for the violin and piano. Uh, again, beautiful melodies, very dramatic at times, and uh, I think just one of the all-time great pieces. The second half uh, is mostly shorter works. Uh, there is a piece by Brahms. It's a scherzo single movement um, with great energy. Um, the second piece is a solo piece, Violin Alone, uh, by Eugene Izai, who's a Belgian uh, violinist uh, composer from around the turn of the century. Th these were written, I believe, in 1924. It's probably the most adventurous work on the program. It's about six minutes, very virtuoso work. Um, Adventurous harmonically a little bit, but very, um, very exciting uh, work. Very real, real showpiece, I think, for the violin. And then the last four pieces are all Tchaikovsky pieces. Um, there's a set of first three pieces, uh, meditation, um, a short scherzo, fast, uh, exciting, dramatic movement not a movement, piece, and uh, melody. And then the last piece is a uh, waltz scherzo. So it's a waltz, and it's also has some little special energy to it. Wonderful. And that's it. So when you were, did you put the program together? Was it this, they came to you, said, do something romantic, and this is the program you put together? Uh, they said they wanted a romantic program. Um, they specifically said, mentioned possibly the Franck Sonata or maybe a Brahms uh, Sonata. And um, I chose to do the Franck. It was, I think, their first request. Um, so I sort of made that kind of the center piece of, of the recital and kind of figured out what would work with that. Nice. So let's go back a little bit and talk about um, how you got started in all of this. Um, did you start playing as a child? Uh, I began with the piano when I was seven. Um, didn't take very well because uh, my mother would beg me to practice for just five minutes and I couldn't do it. I had to go out and play and, and it had really my interest in music, I think I always was drawn to it from an early age, but, uh, but the idea of really playing myself didn't occur to me then. Several years later, I was 12, is when I sort of almost stumbled on, on the violin, went going to a performance. My parents were both singers. I went to a performance where the, a violin is performed. And then very shortly after that, I started listening to 
all kinds of violin pieces and I would listen to it over and over again and kind of, you know, that's when I really kind of decided that that's what I'm going to do. That's what I have to figure out how to do this. So when you were listening to this music, was this material that you had in the home or did you go to the library and listen to it? Um, well, my parents, I say they were both musicians and they had they were sort of audiophiles. They had many, many records and uh, of all kinds of things. Um, they had, there were several uh, violin records that they had, and I would listen to them over and over. And I, I, I also requested, you know, what are, what are, you know, they bought a couple of specific recordings, I think some of Heifetz and some of uh, Perlman, who was, was at the time the young, you know, uh, great violinist. And uh, I wanted to hear what could the violin do, so they they bought you know uh, Paganini Caprices, you know, and and encore uh, violin encore pieces, and it blew me away. Actually, I just couldn't even figure out how to get out of first position, and I'm listening to these things that that I couldn't even fathom how, how you know it sounded like an orchestra practically coming out of one instrument some of these show pieces so I was I was really drawn to it and I wanted to figure out how to do it so at that age you said you were about 12 I was 12 yeah when I when I first started the violin um, were you taking private lessons or was this through public school um, how did that work no it was it was private lessons from from the start uh, my mother had some connections to, uh, she taught voice at uh, Loyola Marymount, and the violin teacher there, Emanuel Kompinski, who wasn't taking beginners, but she spoke with him, and, and his uh, former wife was a violin teacher. So I started lessons right away at that point. And so how long did it take you in that way, practicing at home, private lessons, when did you begin to feel like you were developing a, at a level where you were ready to take the next big step and like go out and perform? Well, it was always a very gradual thing. Um, one of the great things about my first violin teacher was that she would always have music halls. Uh, she, every, every month she would have all her students play with piano and perform for all the parents and you know, it was, you sort of get used to performing even when you're at a, really a beginner. Um, and you know, it, it's a very gradual thing. I, I remember thinking, you know, how do, how do violinists play high notes? I have no idea how these violinists play these high notes. And you know, I didn't know how they get a beautiful sound with vibrato and, and it was all, you know, but I was very determined. I was gonna figure this out. Um, so it's kind of bizarre, I guess, in a way, for a little kid. But that's how I was thinking. So when you were, did you play in orchestra at school as well as private lessons? Did you do that also? Uh, yeah, after I had been playing for probably a little over a year, I joined the, the junior high school orchestra. And probably shortly after that, I, I joined the Santa Monica Youth symphony where my my violin teacher actually was the conductor of, of that orchestra and so that you know I was playing in orchestras early on and in continuously through since really wow. so you um, you said also at the beginning that you do a lot of different kinds of work mm -hmm. um, in addition to your work at the symphony here, um, you also mentioned doing studio work. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that entails and the sure. kind of work you've done? Uh, yeah, well, um, actually I just finished a very exciting thing. We just uh, are putting the very final touches on Star Wars, uh, uh, recording the soundtrack for the upcoming Star Wars movie. In fact, tomorrow is the last session, I think. Um, with John Williams, and uh, that's always very exciting, very uh, sort of an intense kind of feeling because you really have to be at the top of your game, I think. Wow. Um, and so 
you're you're in a, a sound studio, mm-hmm. and you're playing in sections or with a full orchestra. How does that work? It's with full orchestra. Mm-hmm. Yeah, large orchestra for for Star Wars in particular. Um, I think there are thirty violins. 16 first violins, 14 seconds, very large, yeah. <laughs> and um, do, do the sessions last? I mean, what, what, tell me a little bit about the, the process. Uh, how, does that, how does that work? How does that unfold? Well, uh, this one was a little unusual. Uh, usually a, a movie will take place over maybe three or four days maybe even one or two days. It always varies, and usually it's a few days in a row, and then you're done. Uh, this was a very exceptional in that it began the very beginning of June. June 1st, I think, was the first session, and we would skip a few days and then do another one, and then skip another few days, and then skip maybe a few weeks. So we did, I think, maybe 12 uh, full days, basically, 12 or 13 full days, spread out over four months. Wow. And were you able to actually see the movie while you uh, worked on these? Not, not really. <laughs> a little tiny bit. There's a, there's a monitor, there's a, there's a little screen that, that uh, John Williams, when he's conducting, he's looking at, and I can kind of peek, but, you know, we're, we're a little preoccupied usually, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, with playing, so we can't can't see too much. Did you have any um, uh, solo parts? Uh, not not in this instance. No. Um, if there uh, occasionally that that happens um, when we did uh, also with John Williams, uh, the Adventures of Tintin, there was a violin solo which I played. Um, so yeah, that's great. Um, and you also, uh, in addition to being the concertmaster here, you also have been the concertmaster for how long now? 25 years. 25 years. Yeah, hard to believe. So what, is, what does that entail, actually? As for a lot of people, they don't really know what that job mm-hmm. designation is. Can you explain it a little bit so that people can... Well, I think... Um, I think... The biggest part of the job is really how you play and and how you lead with with your body language um, and because you're sort of the in a way the conductor's right hand man so you you know you want to be sure you are doing exactly what the conductor wants and you want to physically there's something I think physical about when you play the violin and you're leading, if you're a concert master, if you play in a very convincing uh, way, if you play with some authority, the people around you will react to that almost on a, on a subconscious level, they will. If you hesitate, if you, you know, don't come in or, you know, you're uncertain, that will, you know, I know, you know, if I've ever, you know, I've sat everywhere in orchestra. If I've, if, if I'm sitting next to the concert master, and I'm ready to come in for an entrance, and the concert master does, isn't ready, I'll immediately second guess myself. So that's, you know, so th- so I think that that's a big part, the way you prepare your part and and. Um, Playing at a level that that hopefully people want to play with you. Um, beyond that, uh, the concert master is responsible for, responsible for bowings. Um, I get the music in advance, and you know because it's it's not an accident that that everybody's bows are going this way at one time and they're going this way. You know, it, it's all very uh, choreographed and figured out in advance. And concertmaster and other section leaders of the strings put the bowings in beforehand. That's great. One of the questions I I was kind of curious about was um, your, 
your interest in or your approach to new music. Um, uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Or is that something that you're interested in sharing? Well, um, I think it's always exciting to, to find new things. Um, um, you know, um, we're playing a piece that's new to me, a uh, composer this week, and that's very exciting and uh, a challenge often to, because different composers, it's almost like a different language. Sometimes you have to play in different ways that maybe you haven't played before. Um, so I think I think it's always always interesting and challenging. Do you? I, I remember back in the day when Joanne Folletta was here. Um, she was commissioning new work all the time, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering if that brought a unique challenge to uh, the job of performing with the symphony. Yes, I mean I think that you know all music you know, of that we play and concertize with, it, nothing is really easy to play. Um, some music is a little more familiar, sort of familiar territory. We still have to practice quite a bit to bring it back, you know, and, and figure out how we're going to play it. Um, I think it can be a real challenge for to, to play something that, that nobody knows at all. Nobody knows how it fits together. Nobody knows, you know, that, that the violins need to be with, you know, with the basses or the, or, the, or, the, or the horns or something. And all this is what, you know, you have to figure out all these details. And I, I think it's exciting and I think it's um, very important to to always search and find new things and you know whether it's discovering older music that maybe maybe we don't know or or is you know or coming back to something or finding something that that nobody knows um, I think is very important I think I think it's how we stretch as musicians as we grow Circling back to the concert you're doing at the Carpenter, there was one other question I wanted to ask about that. Um, it must be a totally different kind of performance experience to um, be with an orchestra and be on stage with just a piano. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, um, what does that feel like? Is, is, is there a totally, is it a different kind of experience for you? Yes, I, I think it is. Um, and I don't know if you're saying like playing a solo with orchestra, which is maybe another thing. When you're playing as a violinist uh, with with in a symphony concert, you know I often maybe don't have a lot of solos, so it's it is, and you're playing with many people. It, it's it's always pressure, and you know you you're always want to play your highest level but it's not quite the same in that setting if you have a like a small solo that can be you know you're so you're you feel somewhat protected when you're when you're one of 14 violin players in a section then after you've been playing for half an hour suddenly you're completely alone and you have a, even just a few bars of a solo and then you have to you know so then you know, the heart rate goes like this for, you know, a couple bars before you have to do your thing is, you know, you want to be good, you want to be great. And um, then there's, if you're soloing a concerto, I think that's probably maybe the most intense experience as a performer um, because there's so much that's on your shoulders. Um, chamber music you have sort of your friends and it's it's somehow you know sure you can be nervous but the, it's a little you're not quite on as you know by your lonesome 
itself. Uh, a recital also, uh, you know, you have your pianist and it's, it's a real collaboration there. So I think, you know, it's probably rambling a little bit. No, that's, well, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why I was asking about that is because I can only imagine that doing the recital must, well, first off, you don't have the privilege of a sheet music in front of you. You're basically playing it from memory, right? Are, are you looking at music when you do a recital? I, well, uh, for some, yes. I'm actually, it's the sonata, the Franck sonata, I'll be using music. The first half I'll, I'll be using music and much of the second half I won't be. Um, the more kind of show pieces I won't be. But there is a difference between playing with a pianist and playing with orchestra in that a pianist is one person and your pianist can immediately react if you do something you know if anything happens your pianist can catch you right there when you've got 80 people behind you if something happens you know real it's kind of on you to right. you know if that makes sense sure right? sure sure well um is there anything else you'd like to share or add um about either the show or performing here or anything else that you'd like to share or add? Well, um, I guess I just have to say uh, Long Beach has been uh, a real uh, musical home for me. Um, probably one of the, probably the biggest with the orchestra here and uh, I'm uh, honored and and uh, happy that I've been able to be here for so long in the, with this orchestra and excited about, uh, about my future here. And, um, and I'm excited to play here uh, this recital program. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.